Hello and welcome to the February 2017 edition of Buncombe Monthly, a show right here on BCTV to let you know about some great upcoming county-sponsored events. Now today we're coming to you from the Asheville Museum of Science in downtown Asheville in their new or semi-new location, depending on if you've been here lately. They're currently undergoing renovation, but some of the exhibits are still open, such as the Colburn Hall of Minerals, which is where I am now. Now, everything I mention in today's episode can be found online at our website at buncombecounty.org. If you'd like to see this program again or any of BCTV's great original programs, visit buncombecounty.org slash BCTV. The Buncombe County Soil and Water Conservation District is holding an upcoming tree seedling and plant sale where you can pick out your very own potentials, everything from white pines to even strawberry plants. It's taking place on Friday and Saturday, March 3rd and 4th at the Buncombe County Soil and Water Conservation District at 49 Mount Carmel Road in Asheville. The hours of operation are 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. or until they're sold out. There are limited quantities, so come early to get the best selection. Seedlings include Eastern Redbud, White Dogwood, Red Mulberry, Persimmon, Bartlett Pear, and more. Plants include many varieties of Blackberry, Raspberry, and Blueberry. For more information about the tree seedling and plant sale, visit buncombecounty.org slash soil. Coming up soon, the Buncombe County Soil and Water Conservation District is holding their Friends of Agriculture Breakfast, where farmers, farming enthusiasts, and people who just care about local agriculture can gather together to talk about future opportunities and, of course, sit down for a nice breakfast. Part of the Farmland Preservation Program, the Friends of Ag Breakfast is held quarterly at the WNC Ag Center and is open to the public. The breakfast brings together people from all walks of life who are interested in agriculture and features local food and a guest speaker focusing on ag-related topics and issues. We've been holding this breakfast since 2011 and reach out to about a thousand people annually. Asheville and Buncombe County first responders are in a bit of a competition right now for the most pints. That's pints and not points. They're looking for blood donations for their seventh annual Battle of the Badges blood drive. It's taking place on Wednesday, February 22nd from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the First Baptist Church at 5 Oak Street in Asheville. All presenting donors at this blood drive will receive a t-shirt and great food courtesy of area restaurants. Not only will you be saving a life with this great event, but you will also be showing support to some of our great local unsung heroes, your emergency first responders. For more information on donating blood or to make an appointment, you can call 1-800-RED-CROSS or visit redcrossblood.org and enter the sponsor code AVL Battle of Badges. You can also download the My Blood Donor app to schedule your appointment today. So Pack Memorial Library is hosting a great event, both topping off and honoring Black History Month with a storytelling series called Word. Word with host David Joe Miller is taking place on Saturday, February 25th at 2 p.m. at Pack Library. It will feature storytellers Raymond Christian and Roy Harris and poets Jasmine Henderson and Elizabeth Mead. This program is free and the public is invited. It's sponsored by the Buncombe County Friends of the Library. For more information about this or other great events from the Buncombe County Public Library System, you can visit buncombecounty.org slash library. Well, the Asheville Community Theater wants you to know that even though they're doing renovations to their main stage right now, they are still holding many performances coming up in the next couple months. So if you're a local theater goer or you've never really given them a shot before, check out some of these events. They might just change your mind. Performances coming up include Songs for a New World performed in 35 Below, a youth production class presentation of The Lion, The Witch, and The Wardrobe, the ACT and UNC Asheville's co-production of Peter and the Starcatchers, the storytelling series Listen to This, and finally the Actors Center of Asheville's presentation of This is Our Youth. For more information about all of these great upcoming performances or to purchase tickets, you can visit AshevilleTheater.org. The WNC Regional Air Quality Agency is currently taking nominations from businesses, organizations, and local individuals for the NC Clean Air Awards they do every year. So if you know of a business or organization that makes a great impact in our air quality, submit your nomination today. Examples of voluntary pollution prevention measures include significant energy efficiency upgrades, switching to more environmentally friendly and lower emitting solvents and cleaners, installing renewable energy systems, 
and upgrading fleet vehicles to more fuel-efficient or lower-emitting models. The Air Quality Agency asks that all nominations be submitted by March 10th. If you have any questions or you'd like more information, you can contact Ashley Featherstone with the WNC Regional Air Quality Agency at 828-250-6778, email ashley.featherstone at buncombecounty.org, or visit wncairquality.org. The Buncombe County Public Library System isn't just a great resource to check out books. They sponsor many events for every age and interest throughout the entire month. In fact, here are a few coming up. On Tuesday, February 15th at 4 p.m., the Inca Candler Library is hosting the Care Partners presentation of I Don't Want to Move into a Skilled Nursing Facility, What Are My Options? Laura Baker Sika from Care Partners will present a program for seniors on how to remain living independently. On Saturday, February 18th from 2 to 4 p.m., Pack Memorial Library is hosting a book repair lecture with Diaz Sasso of Light and Day Bindery, Southern Highland Craft Guild, Guild of Book Covers, and resident artist in book repair at the John C. Campbell Folk School. It will be followed by two workshop series. On Tuesday, February 21st at 2 p.m., Pack Memorial Library is hosting a free showing of the documentary Freedom Riders. It's the story of the Civil Rights Movement interstate busing protest campaign. And finally, on Wednesday, February 22nd at 11.30 a.m., the Swannanoa Library is hosting Laughter Yoga. Laughter Yoga is good for your heart, body, and mind, and you must be 18 years and able to move during moderately physical workout to participate. Those were just a handful of the events taking place at the Buncombe County Public Library System this February. If you would like to check out the full list, Visit their calendar of events at buncombecounty.org slash library. And now it's time to keep an eye out for the Mountains Most Wanted of February 2017. Just so you know, information leading to an arrest of any of these individuals can net you a cash reward. Jonathan Lee Lance is wanted for felony probation violation, habitual felon, habitual breaking and entering, felony larceny, conspiracy to commit breaking and entering, and felony breaking and entering. Lance is a 35-year-old white male who's 5 foot 1 and weighs 180 pounds. He has brown hair and blue eyes. His last known address, 82 Bear Farm Road, Candler. Jeffrey Daniel Newsom is wanted for enforcing an act of 50-B and driving with license revoked, not impaired. Newsom is a 43-year-old white male who is 5 foot 10 and weighs 150 pounds. He has brown hair and hazel eyes. His last known address, 472 Cragmont Road, Black Mountain. If you know the location of any of the mounts most wanted, you could receive a cash reward. All you have to do is email tips at buncombecounty.org or you can call Crime Stoppers at 828-255-5050. With your help, we can continue to make Buncombe County a safer place to live, work, and play. The Asheville Museum of Science is currently undergoing renovations in their downtown area to provide more science fun for both students and science-loving adults. In fact, BCTV recently partnered with the Asheville Museum of Science to create a series of short videos on how to make science fun for everyone. And one we made is on granite. Granite is everywhere. Granite is used for everything from countertops to building facades, even sculptures. It's one of the oldest, most abundant rocks in the Earth's crust, and also one of the hardest, second only to diamonds. But did you know how it's created? Granite is a light-colored igneous rock containing large mineral grains. It forms from the slow crystallization of magma, which is underground lava. Igneous were some of the first rocks on Earth. Considering the Blue Ridge Mountains are between 250 million and 1 billion years old, that means any granite countertops you see from our region are older than the first dinosaur that walked the Earth. Think about that the next time you're making lunch. Granite gets its unique coloring because while it hardens deep underground, it cools slowly enough for mineral crystals to grow, becoming visible to the naked eye. The most common colors are pink, white, and variations of gray and black. 
Some of the world's finest white granite can be found right here in North Carolina. The white comes from an abundance of quartz in our mountains. Mount Airy, North Carolina, nicknamed the Granite City, is home to the largest open-faced granite quarry in the world. In fact, the Buncombe County Judicial Complex used over 23,000 square feet of white Mount Airy granite. So the next time you see granite in a kitchen, building, or monument, think about all the science that went into this beautiful rock. Learn more interesting facts about minerals at the Asheville Museum of Science. Well, if you have the heart of a volunteer, but not really the schedule of one, there are still things you can do to provide quality resources to important organizations like the Asheville Humane Society. All you have to do is go out to eat with their 14th annual Dine to be Kind. It's presented by Dr. David Crouch with Western Carolina Veterinary Surgery. If you dine out for breakfast, lunch, or dinner at a participating restaurant on Tuesday, March 7th, 15% or more of your bill will be donated to the Asheville Humane Society. For a list of participating restaurants, you can visit AshevilleHumane.org. If you're interested in volunteering for the Dine to be Kind experience, you can email volunteer at AshevilleHumane.org. Asheville Greenworks is a great local nonprofit dedicated to mobilizing the community to keep our environment cleaner. They have a great volunteering opportunity coming up, and they need your help because Pond Road is pretty trashed. It's taking place on Saturday, February 18th from 9 a.m. to noon at the Riverbend Malt House at 99 Pond Road in Asheville. As a result of all of the waste haulers that use this road to access the transfer station, it's pretty trashed. If you're interested in helping out this worthwhile cause, please email volunteer at AshevilleGreenworks.org. For more information or to keep posted on future cleanups, you can visit AshevilleGreenworks.org or give them a call at 828 254 1776. Speaking of the Asheville Museum of Science, where we are now, they're combining forces with the Collider to bring you a great scientific presentation with their Beer City Science Pub. Taking place on Friday, February 24th from 5.30 to 8 p.m. at the Collider at 1 Haywood Street, which is the fourth floor of the Wells Fargo building. The doors open at 5.30, but the presentation begins at 6.30. Dr. Don Lewis will present Out of Africa, the story of the Homo erectus, where he will delve into the world of anthropology and the human's great migration out of Africa. So come in, grab a local craft beverage provided by the Asheville Brewers Alliance, watch the sunset over Asheville, enjoy some small bites, and settle in for a great night of science. For more information, you can visit AshevilleScience.org. There is a great event coming up designed to expose women and girls to a variety of sports activities to lead to an active and healthy life. It is the National Girls and Women in Sports Day, and it's taking place at UNCA. It's happening on Saturday, February 18th from 9 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. and open to women and girls age 6 and older. It's a chance to try a new sport or fitness class or improve skill in any sport you're interested in. Registration is $15, which includes a clinic, a goodie bag, a healthy lunch, and admission to the UNCA women's basketball game that afternoon. This event is produced by the City of Asheville Parks and Recreation Department in collaboration with UNCA, Buncombe County Recreation Services, Girls on the Run, Girl Scouts of Carolina Peak to Piedmont, and the YMCA. For more information, you can visit AshevilleNC.gov parks or call 828-259-5800. If you're a local cyclist here in Buncombe County, you won't want to miss this upcoming fundraiser from New Belgium Brewing. It's benefiting Asheville on Bikes, and it's called Bike Love. It's taking place on Saturday, February 18th from 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. at the Salvage Station, located at 468 Riverside Drive in Asheville. Bike Love 2017 features bicycle raffles, silent auctions, music, and of course, local craft drinks. Asheville on Bikes cultivates the culture of commuting and urban cycling within our city through celebration and advocacy. They believe that bicycling has a direct impact on the health of our community, and they play a crucial role in transforming Asheville's transportation options to provide after-school urban bicycling education. They also host a variety of outreach events designed to encourage and inspire participation in urban cycling. For more information about the upcoming Bike Love fundraiser, visit AshevilleOnBikes.com. 
Do you know what the Wilma Dykeman Riverway Development Project is? Well, it's a plan for the future from Riverlink, a local nonprofit that spent the past 20 years dedicated to keeping our riverways beautiful. If you want to know more about it, they do bus tours every month. The tour will take you through the French Broad and Swannanoa Rivers, where you can witness their magic firsthand. There is an opportunity to see improvements that have occurred and hear what is coming up over the next several months to years to make our rivers a better place to live, learn, work, and play. You will also learn some local history and visit some streets and neighborhoods you've probably never seen before. For more information, you can visit riverlink.org. The next tours will take place on February and March 16th, so register online today. If you want to check out some of the finest bluegrass musicians we have here in Buncombe County, then you want to check out the 22nd Annual Bluegrass First Music Festival. It's taking place on Friday, February 17th through Sunday, February 19th at the Crown Plaza Resort in Asheville. In addition to the main stage shows, many artists will also entertain audiences in cozier showcase stages. The entire hotel will be dedicated to bluegrass for the weekend. For more information about this fantastic gathering or for tickets, you can visit bluegrassfirstclass.com. The Asheville Art Museum in downtown is currently going through renovations, but if you still need an art fix, don't worry, they have pop-up areas all over. These temporary locations will also offer programs and exhibits. One temporary location is the Asheville Art Museum on the slope at 175 Biltmore Avenue. It's open Tuesday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Sunday from 1 to 5 p.m. Stop by for a small gallery, education studio, the gift shop, and some programming. For more information about locations and programs offered, visit AshevilleArt.org. One event that is coming up is Toast Asheville at Highland Brewing. It will be a festive gathering to celebrate the reinvention and renovation of the Asheville Art Museum. If you enjoy local craft beverages, high-energy Latin music, and art-minded individuals, you can purchase your ticket online at AshevilleArt.org. Well, thank you for joining us here at the Asheville Museum of Science. Even though they're undergoing renovations right now, there is still plenty to do and see, like the Teratophonius behind me out in the front. Now, anything I mentioned in today's episode, you can find more information about on our website at buncombecounty.org. While you're there, check out all of BCTV's original programming by visiting buncombecounty.org slash BCTV. Finally, stay up to date with county information by checking out our County Center, which is a news hub for local information and government resources. Again, thank you for watching, and have a great February, Buncombe County.